Hello and welcome back to part two of our third day of Journalism and Media Week. This morning we heard from six of our previous students, all of whom are in work and um, all of whom um, are the footsteps you could follow in yourselves and I hope you got to hear some of them. Um, this morning. And then we had Jane Garvey, the um, anchor for BBC Woman's Hour. Um, and I'm delighted to welcome you now to uh, Nick Westby. Hi, Nick. Um, Hi. He's, he's a sports editor of the Yorkshire Post and the Yorkshire Evening Post. And this afternoon, he's going to show us how to grab the employer's attention. I know lots of our students will be really excited to hear, particularly as you, um, as you are um, you actually read um, applications and so forth. Mm. So I'd just like to remind everybody that we're live on Facebook and live on YouTube. So mm. now is the time to get your questions coming in and we will get to them. We've got 45 minutes of Nick. So um, please, now is your moment to find out how to grab the employee's attention. And let's hear, first of all, a bit from you, Nick. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Uh, uh, hello to everyone watching. Uh, funny old times, these. With the, this is my uh, work office as it has been for the last seven months, the uh, spare bedroom. Uh, I got into the profession uh, 20 years ago, straight out of university. It's all I ever wanted to do, journalism, when I realised I wasn't going to be a footballer. I thought, I love football so much, I want to write about it. Uh, so I geared my entire ed education from about A-levels all the way up to degree uh, to becoming a sports journalist, which I'm sure a lot of you on this course have, have done similar. Uh, I graduated the University of Lincoln in 2001 with a degree in journalism. Uh, while I was there, um, what am I going to be doing job-wise? Uh, I, I did a hell of a lot of work experience, as much work experience across a broader spectrum of the sports journalism world as I could. I, um, I'd already pigeonholed myself effectively by saying I wanted to be a sports journalist. But within that, I could broaden what area I would go into. So I did a lot of radio, university radio station. I did Saturday shifts at the BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Uh, I did a bit of work for the South Yorkshire Times newspaper, sending in articles. Uh, I did work experience weeks here and there, Rotherham Advertiser, places like that, a day at the Sheffield Star, all that stood me in good stead. Uh, and I was quite fortunate. I got straight into a job. Two weeks after university at the South Yorkshire Times, uh, because they recognised my name from submitting articles before, I was given the chance as a trainee journalist uh, in June of 2001. Now, I did come out of university uh, without NCTJ accreditation, so I'd done my journalism degree, but I then found out as soon as I got a new job, I had to do exams all over again, uh, get NCTJ accredited, get up to speed on short term because I wasn't up to speed on short term uh, and and do my exams again. Uh, so I was able to do that. And I think the fact that I had already been put myself in front of the editor of the South Yorkshire Times, a lady called Linda Waslidge, by submitting articles before and showing keenness uh, before, that helped me bridge the gap of the fact that I wasn't accredited. So that got me in. And then two months in, Saturday's news. Uh, news wasn't really my what I wanted to do, uh, but most newspapers then certainly certainly then not so much nowadays. But you needed to do news. But two months in, the sports editor went to another job, and already the industry was starting to not so much fall apart, but people weren't being replaced. So I uh, volunteered to do sport two days a week, uh, and the editor said definitely. Let's do that. So I split my week after two months. I was splitting my week three days a week news, three days a week, week two days a week sport. Uh, and I managed to turn that into, by the time I qualified two years later, she gave me the, my, my editor gave me the sports uh, position full time. Um, out of interest, Nick, um, was that your um, through the, when you did the work experience? Was that in the sports or the news or, or neither? Bit of both. Bit of both. Uh, the radio. I came. I had a lot more work experience radio-wise, and that was sport for the university and for the BBC. But when you did your work experience, it was mainly for news. So again, I didn't pigeonhole myself just with sport. I looked at the whole broader range and thought. I need to 
you know, sample a little bit of everything uh, so that I'm not going into an interview without any knowledge of what I had. So if, if you know, I'd got into a position where I could apply for a radio job, I could apply for a print job. Uh, and if you're in that position now, if you, you can apply for a print job or a radio, you can apply for an online job as well, obviously. Uh, so by 2003, I'd got onto full-time support. And also within this time, I was doing freelance football reporting at local grounds. I got in with an agency, um, showed, showed willing in terms of covering matches an extra day a week. So I was working six days a week, but it, it never bothered me. Uh, at a match on a Saturday. Uh, I was writing for the Sun, the Mail on Sunday, and that really honed my skills. Uh, filing copy instantly, quick. That was excellent, uh, grounded. Uh, and I did that for another three years at the Oxford Times. And then, and, and when sorry, just to butt in again, when you said um, you did you covered matches, did you just do the match reports, or did you go behind the scenes and get other stories from the fans and whatnot? Uh, it was just merely the match reports because. Uh, you, you cover the match, you get in the, on the accreditation of the South Yorkshire Times, you make yourself known in the press box, and then you, you start writing reports. They're not so much behind the scenes at that stage. Uh, it was it was more just just what everyone else was doing, but you're just doing it for, you just become a stringer, doing it for different agencies, doing it for different newspapers. Uh, so I, uh, by 2006, I was able to spread my wings and I took a job at the Workshop Guardian which is an, was another weekly newspaper. It wasn't the natural step I wanted to be making, but it it was a two-man team, and I was in charge of that. Uh, and I was there for two years, and I learned a bit more management, uh, spread my wings a bit. And all in the meantime as well, I was, I'd started doing shifts at the Yorkshire Post on Sunday night, uh, their subbing shifts, which were 3 o'clock in the afternoon till 11 o'clock at night, putting putting Sports Monday supplement together. I started those in May of 2005. Uh, and by May of 2008, having done that solidly for three years, so working sometimes six, seven day weeks, which I felt I had to do to get my foot in the door. I finally got a job at the Yorkshire Post sports desk as digital sports reporter. But, so in in sorry in those three years, um, was there anything particularly you felt that really did it did it give you a sort of rung on the ladder if you like to mm. climb up? To, could you tell oh, us yeah, a bit definitely. about that? What what did well, you learn I, from it? Well, I had uh, well from their perspective, they learned that someone who was reliable, someone who could they could ask to turn the hand to anything. Uh, I'd been doing it, you know, three years on the Yorkshire Post. Um, the the football reporting continued alongside that, and that gave you, it just gave you, you you're quite narrow-minded on a weekly newspaper. You think you think like the local cup final is the biggest event of the week, so it's the biggest event anyone's talking about. Then you go to cover a match report for a national newspaper, and you realise that's the biggest thing you're doing that day. But again, it's, it's nothing to them. It's only a, a few pars. It, it gives you a, a broader perspective of the, the bigger picture of how everything fits together and how um and how they give you difficult to difficult to say really on in terms of that but it just it gives you a perspective on how how the industry works and by doing as much as I could, various little bits. I was gathering knowledge all the time on what I would need, what would help me when I was writing an application, uh, and what and what I could do to get the attention of the person I was wanting to get the attention of that at that time, the sports edge of the Yorkshire Post, who knew I was reliable. Uh, and for instance, there was a job coming up. I wasn't ideally suited to this job. It was digital sports reporter. It's just it was one of the many strings to my bow at that time, but it wasn't what I was exactly. Uh, I wanted to be a sports writer, a reporter, first and foremost. But it, this was a way in, and it was an opportunity I had to seize. And a bit like when I did in 2001, two months in, when I took the sports section of the South Yorkshire Times on, I had to. It was an opportunity I had to seize. Uh, it might not have been. I might not have been ready, but Sometimes you just got to take these opportunities when they come. And that's what I did. 
with the Yorkshire Post. Uh, and I finally got on in uh, May of 2008. And uh, initially as digital sports reporter, uh, but as happened in the South York Times, after about two months, the um, rugby union reporter quit and moved on to a new paper. And again, he wasn't replaced. Uh, and I said, I put my hand up and said, I'll do it. And I wasn't a massive rugby union man, but suddenly I was at Twickenham covering Autumn Internationals and Six Nations games. Fantastic. Uh, and then I picked it up from there, carried on with doing the rugby union, a bit, bit of football. Uh, and then the Olympics honed into New London 2012. Uh, we had no one to cover it on our desk. So again, I put my hand up. I, got, I used to get a bit of stick because all I used to ever used to say was, I'll do it. So that my uh, senior colleagues gave me a bit of hammer for that. But it got me to the Olympics in 2012 which was an amazing experience. Uh, it got me to cover the Tour de France when it came to Yorkshire, because, again, there was no one to do cycling. I, I positioned myself by this time as a jack-of-all-trades. So I did the Tour de France as well in Yorkshire. And then when it came to them needing a new sports editor in 2015, again, it was probably a bit before my time, my timeline of where I wanted to be. But when these opportunities present themselves and I put myself in a position where because of the subbing, because of the production, because of the I was doing, running the desk on occasion at that stage, because of the writing, because of the digital, I put myself in a position where I could do pretty much everything that was required. Uh, and I took the step up to sports editor. Uh, so um, with that one, was that a question of you saying, oh, I'll do it, or were you interviewed for that role? When you say again, you took... No, it was, it was. It was almost an I'll do it. It was a newsroom restructure, mm. uh, which is basically a euphemism for a round of redundancies. Uh, mm. So they weren't going to apply from externally. The next sports editor was going to come from within the desk, uh, and there were about 15 people on this desk at the time because we'd already come back we'd already merged with the Yorkshire Evening Post by then uh, and it was a case of me just putting my hand up and saying I put my name in put my name in the hat for that I'm interested uh, so, so in what, a moment we, you're going to come on and uh, help our students aren't you with how to do their own application so what which stage did you need an application it sounds like you went from um from London 2012 to right to and the Six Nations through to the Tour de France without did you need an application in any of that time? I needed an application for workshop, and uh, in 2006, uh, which um, the experience I'd gained covering five years on a weekly helped, and the experience of covering national football helped as well. There, I needed an application for the Yorkshire Post as well in 2008, uh, which. I was reliably told wasn't the best application I'd ever put together, but because they knew me, because I'd already, I'd already gone above and beyond, and they liked what they saw in three years. I appreciate not one everyone's going to get three years work experience effectively out of it, but um, they knew what they, they were getting with me, so they appointed. Uh, I I started looking at applications and seeing a raft of people, uh, interviewing a raft of people for jobs from basically twenty. 2015 when I could identify talent in the weeklies that we were suddenly merged with and bring them up onto the daily titles and then uh, we've from the recent times uh, we've appointed a couple of trainee reporters we've appointed a new chief football writer for the Yorkshire Post a new chief football writer for the Yorkshire Evening Post of the year from yesterday Graham Smith that's the second time I've appointed him I appointed him at workshop as well can't get away from it to be honest uh, and uh, we've also appointed a Leeds United digital man, Joe Urquhart, who I'm Brilliant. guessing is the name you're familiar with. Yes, absolutely. So so you've um, appointed people recently um, who've applied based mm. on their application. And a, a theme that strikes me that emerges from uh, your story so far is that you put your hand up and said, I'll do it. Mm. How do you get that across in an application? That is difficult. I think... You need to see a versatility in work experience. You need to see someone who is, there's a lot of blogs out there, there's HITC for one. Uh, you need, I don't think, or oh, Planet Football, I don't think they're 
amazing barometers of a person, but it shows that you're willing. It shows that you're writing regularly about sport. It shows that you've put yourself out there. So that's one thing I see. I see um, a bit of bit of radio. If you've got a bit of radio, a bit of print as well. If you've got even if it's just a week at the Yorkshire Evening Post that you've had on our desk, put that down because we always try and get people's bylines in. It's always good to see that you've done a bit of work on a weekly or if or on a newspaper, sorry, or if for whatever the job is you're going for that you've got a bit of work experience in that area. If you have done, um, if you're going for an online job, show that you've show that you've worked on websites, that you've done blogs. If you're going for a Channel 4 producer job, show that you've, um, what your experience is in that area in terms of work experience, or even if it's just the university television station that you've been doing that. So people know that, you have got a decent grounding knowledge of that. Uh, one of the key things I think, and if I take Joe Urquhart as the example, I remember looking through the applications uh, for digital sports reports for the Yorkshire Evening Post, which is effectively Leeds United number three. Um, I was with the head of audience and he wasn't impressed with Joe's um, application. And had it, he had him out of his bottom, top five for the shortlist. But I said, let's just squeeze him in. There was something that struck me about him. Joe Urquhart had gone, finished uni, and then off his own back, he went and moved to Fife in Scotland to become the uh, press man, uh, media man for East Fife Football Club, who he'd never had any contact with ever before. He just letter bombed every football club he could think of. East Fife took him up on the offer of doing their social media channels and doing their uh, match reports for online. And he went off his own back and moved up to East Fife. Uh, and I thought that was amazing. And that really struck with me. And then he, he did similar to get his first full-time job at National Club Golfer. Uh, showed a willingness to learn to go above and beyond and he showed a desire to uh, put himself above his, his, because he, he, was, he appreciated he was coming out with a, a degree like a lot of you are so he thought how am I going to do this and these five move was a smart move because it certainly caught my eye uh, and then with a national club golfer again he attracted their attention by uh, with his East Fife work, uh, and when we finally got him in, for, when we did get him into for interview, he he was hands down uh, the number one candidate, having been the on our shortlist prior going in. Uh, certainly wasn't the strongest candidate. So the, the East, it was, it was East Fife thing. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Sorry. The, no, that, there was just something about him that that move up to East Fife off his own back. Uh, really struck a chord, and really. So it. that he'd got your your above and beyond would be that he'd travelled somewhere to just to show his commitment. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. One one thing I think it is something all students or graduates should be doing uh, is, and, and certainly one thing I look for more than anything is how have you separated separate yourself from the pack and I think you can do that by doing by covering a sport or a club for a year voluntarily which might sound hard when you're just coming out of university and you've got debts to pay uh, but there are a myriad clubs around Yorkshire around the country who are going to be needing this even more now that we're in a pandemic they're going to be needing they're going to be making redundant clubs are going to be making redundancies and they're going to be outsourcing communications they're not, and they're not going to be they're going to be reluctant to do that because they're not going to have much money at all so what they need is someone to run their social media channels and someone to run their match reports so what i'd be doing is i would be letter bombing 
as many clubs across as many sports as I possibly can, saying I will do this service for you for a year. It will be good experience for me, and it's free service for you. Now you don't have to do what Joe did and move to uh, out to Hebrides or wherever it was. Uh, it could be Featherstone Rovers, it could be uh, Ca Castle Tigers women, it could be Sheffield United women. Uh, but some will need assistance in that, and that is invaluable. Uh, it is uh, really it sh it shows from my perspective as a an employer it shows that you're dedicated to a, a task that you're willing to do something along those lines to get a foot in the door. I mean, you might do it and they might think, right, you're excellent at this. You don't need to apply for any other jobs. We'll hire you as you are. We've got to come into a bit of money. But it shows, and, it, and for you as coming out of uni, it will be invaluable experience. That learning, that sitting in a press box, covering the games, uh, even if it, you, you know, it's not the journalistic instincts you've been working to, but you're getting into the industry, you're learning the ropes, uh, you see other press people uh, in action, you can interact with them, you'll pick up your own contact, the club, you will learn internal communications, you'll, you'll learn external communications because you'll suddenly become their spokesman. And that's what Joe did with East Five. Uh, and that's what really caught the eye for me on that occasion. That's really interesting. Um, thank you. I'd like to ask you a bit more about the, um, the broad spectrum that you've spoken about. So, so far this week, um, people have been saying, our sports ex-journalists, uh, students who've gone on to get jobs recently, have been saying that actually for them, it's been a real help having a niche sport. So they've picked uh, sort of a Maltese football or or an aspect of boxing or whatnot. And I'm, mm. I'm fascinated that maybe you're adding another layer now for us. To, also, that you'd be interested in having a broad range of sports or are you saying blag it like you did to do the six nations <laughs> when you were a football fan i did come across as if i blagged it i suppose I did, <laughs> no well i always say when we get work experience people in what do you want to i who do you support uh are from sport Leeds united what other sports do you like everyone likes football 90 percent of people who are doing sports journalism courses want to do football journalism so just think about how competitive is that going to be? Uh, so I don't go to work experience and just say your only sport is football because you're just you're making it even harder for yourself to get a job. If you like tennis, focus on that. How many tennis journalists are there? How many tennis jobs are there? Not that many. But how many tennis journalists are there? There are not that many. You can easily carve out a niche covering tennis um you like boxing another niche sport but very good very a lot of you, you go to a boxing press conference and it is full there are so many boxing journalists you won't believe how many there are uh because there's always blogs springing up so when you're writing applications if you want to go football that's fine just re make sure remember you're going up against so many other people You've got to look at so many other things. Uh, you, you, you're in Yorkshire at the minute, an absolute rugby league heartland. How many rugby league clubs are there that you might be able to email and say, "Look, I can do you. Uh, I can do you this for a year." Featherstone, Batley, Dewsbury, uh, Hunslet, to name but a few. Rugby mm -hmm. union clubs are dying at the minute. Leeds Tykes have just come back. They might need something like this. I know Phil Daly at. Um, the media manager at Leeds Rugby had someone doing it last year. For instance, this we have I have a student who does similar to this every couple of years. Uh, I don't know if you remember Leeds Force of the BBL. Uh, they came into being around 2014. I initially took it up and covered them. Uh, another sporting blag from me. Uh, but then when I became <laughs> manager, I couldn't do it. So what I did, I put it out to tender to a couple of uh, a work extra who came in and showed an interest, told me he liked basketball. Uh, and I said, OK, then let's, we need someone to write basketball for us. So this person for the York Tribune Post for an entire season wrote a preview, a match report, 
and uh, and, and he um, ghosted a player column. So he had three bylines mm-hmm. in the Yorkshire Evening Post every week, That's all great. through his final year of mm. university. That lad is Arif Ahmed, who's now who walked into a job at Calendar. Uh, three bylines is, is a high bar, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The following year, uh, another lad, he was from Huddersfield Uni, I think, uh, Seb Gigner, did exactly the same. And then uh, he went and he set up his own basket BBL blog uh, from university. He got the confidence to do that after that. Three bylines a week in the Yorkshire Evening Post. I've got a, a girl called Flora Snelson. She's at uh, Leeds United. Uh, she, sorry, uh, she's from Cambridge. She came to university up here. Uh, she should have done a work experience with us uh, first week of lockdown, but she couldn't do it, obviously. She is now uh, doing uh, a Leeds United women's piece every Saturday in the Yorkshire Evening Post. She does a player interview. She rings, rings up the coach every Monday, speaks to the speaks to the uh, manager. He puts her in touch with one of the players. She arranges to speak to them, and she does us 500 words for publication every Saturday. Uh, it's a free byline for her every week, and she builds up the contacts. She builds up the repertoire of uh, building, uh, getting through, and getting bylines in every week in a daily newspaper, which will stand her in very good stead when the time comes. Uh, and also, it's not easy to identify uh, boom sports, but doesn't take doesn't take a genius to work out that women's football is on the growth. Leeds United. Uh, maybe fourth tier, I think, uh, women's football. Mm. But they're a big name. Mm. They've got potential to go places quickly. Uh, mm. And she's well in with them now after just doing it for two months. Uh, well. And I'm also looking, I'm, all, I'm already in the marketplace for someone to do Leeds Rhinos netball for the Yorkshire Evening Post, Post on, that, on those terms. Uh, match report, a preview piece every week, and maybe goes to Colin for us from when Leeds Rhinos Netball joined Vitality Super League in uh, twen- in February 2021. And if anyone is wants to email me, they're interested in doing that, I will, uh, I've got a couple of interested candidates, but I'll, uh, I'll gladly speak to someone at Leeds Trinity and uh, see if they want to do that on a year's basis. Uh, and I'm also, I'm also looking for someone to do similar for the Yorkshire Post with Sheffield Sharks in basketball as well, because it's good for us because we don't have the staff to cover uh, those sports, and we also, but and it's great for you, absolutely brilliant for you, uh, in terms of building contacts, building confidence, and covering a sport or a club like that, like Joe Urquhart did, uh, yeah. and how he got the job. Thanks, that's brilliant. I'm sure you'll be it's very good for Flora, that isn't it? And um, mm. I'm. I'm sure you'll be getting emails from our students um, almost straight away. But what we do have already is lots of questions. So would you like to field some of those for us? Sure, certainly. Brilliant. Well, over on, uh, I say over because I'm not there, on YouTube, Ben Cropper has one for you. He says, "Um, I'm not sure if you're going to cover this in your talk, but could you explain the process of pitching local sports stories for anyone who wants to start freelancing? Yeah, well, we did a, we ran a scheme uh, in early part of lockdown uh, where I, invited students to uh, pitch a story and there were a couple of Leeds Trinity students who did at the time because uh, I appreciate the fact that if there's no work experience I'm talking about getting a broad work range of work experience and you just can't get work experience at the minute because offices are shut you can come and sit on my settee um, pitch a story uh, make sure make it clear in the headline because people I get 150 emails a day and you might catch me on a good day Flora Snelson caught me on a on a mm. good moment where I could email straight a, a back straight away, I might you might not catch me when I can email you straight back. So, story pitch in the headline, make it succinct, who you are, where you're at, uh, and Joe Smith, Leeds Trinity sports journalism student, third year. This is my story pitch. Any feedback you can give me greatly appreciated. Any, if you want me to do this story, I can go out and get it and do it for you. Uh, and give me a suggested word count as well. Um, because it's difficult. I, I had one recently. I feel a bit bad that I couldn't run it, but a, a guy, he was only 18, uh, and he 
he sent in a, a piece that was basically 3,000 words long and he'd rewritten Wikipedia and I ain't got time to read that. I could tell similar. So I, I asked him to go back and just have another look at it uh, and try and rewrite it again. Um, and he did. And we were able to look at it a bit closer. But we're always going to be in the need for stuff like this. And not think outside the box as well. Don't, don't come at me or another uh, editor and say, I watched Leeds versus Leicester on uh, Monday night. And I can tell you where Leeds United went wrong. I don't need that. I've got <laughs> plenty of right to tell me that. What I need is uh, like one of the story pitches that we ran through the student initiative was a brilliant one. It was about a Muslim netball team from Bradford, which were nowhere near my radar because Yorkshire is obviously a massive sp uh, place, but it was a great story. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, so if you're from Yorkshire, how big is Yorkshire? It's massive. It's going to be sports stories all over the place. Uh, Yorkshire Evening Post wise, uh, it's Leeds all the way. It's Leeds is a bit too heavy, even Alan, it's a bit too heavy Leeds United. So we want as much uh, Leeds content going in as we can. Is, is, there a, is there a young teenager Leeds Athletics Club who can uh, run 800 metres quicker than Casta Semenya could at her age? Is there a hockey player we should be looking at at Leeds at uh, the local hockey club? P things like that. You might, uh, you know, you might play squash regularly. Is there someone there that your club we should be looking at that should be on our radar? They're the story pitches. I mean, I've got Rhinos and I've got Leeds United covered. I've got all the big clubs covered. If you're going to do a story pitch, make it short, succinct, who you are, where you're at. This is what I've got. This is what I can get. Are you interested? That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, hope that was all right for you, Mr. Cropper. Now, Charlie Austin, also on um, YouTube. How important or necessary do you feel the NCTGA and shorthand is in journalism today? I noticed you referenced it earlier. Yeah, not as important as it was 20 years ago, but shorthand is still massive. I mean, I cheat because I, my shorthand is probably about 60 words a minute now. And so when I interview someone, I record off one forward phone and uh, record on another and then transcribe. Um, shorthand though is still vital today, I think. If you've got it, uh, still still go for it. If these lessons been offered, take them. Because I got lucky, I didn't take them at university, I should have done. Uh, I was lucky that the company paid for me to have shorthand lessons, but some lessons, some, some companies won't. But then having said that, I hired a trainee reporter uh, two years ago, Ben McKenna for the weeklies, who we've pretty, pretty much promoted to the Oxford Post. He's that impressive. He's done such a good job. Uh, and he's not got short term. And he's not got his NCTJ. So in journalism, in sports journalism, it's it's not the be all and end all. I would, I would encourage you getting it. If you can get it, do so. But if you haven't got it, don't feel as though it's restricted. I won't mention it on your application that you haven't got it i just ignore it and mm. build up your other strengths mm. thank you what what impressed you about that other guy that you did take it was a tip off from the guy i was interviewing him with who had given him work experience before uh and had seen his work in i think it was rugby league express at the time so it seemed that it got a range of experience that he was doing two days a week here getting paid he was doing two days a week there so he weren't doing two, he wasn't doing full-time jobs he was just doing bits that showed his determination that showed that he was versatile uh and to me he has taken me by surprise i didn't think he'd be as good as he is but he is he's a he's an all-rounder he's a he's just he, someone you can every sports session you would have you can ask him to do anything and they'll do it and Thank that, you. That, that that's what, reassuring, isn't it? Reassuring yeah. that, that he can. Get, so word of mouth from bits of placement. So some of our students sometimes feel disappointed because they can't get a full five or six weeks in the, of placement in one place. But you're yeah. saying and actually having done that lots of do bits that. is quite good. Vers more versatile. Yes, I won't do that. I mean, we know, we don't offer six weeks. What we do sometimes is we have offered to students 
that they come in, I mean, it's difficult at the minute, that they come in every Friday. Uh, or they come in every, you know, every other Thursday or something like that. And we know they come in. There's a lad who interviewed for that job that Ben McKenna got called Seb Sternick. And he was, uh, I just liked him. Uh, he was, but he was a bit rough around the edges. He just wasn't ready. But mm. I brought him in and he, uh, and he, uh, and he was coming in every Thursday afternoon. And I said to mm. him, look, just come in and sit with us. You, you look like to me, like you've not been on a sports test before. I see some, there's some potential there. I like your versatility. Mm. He, he, was like, he was like doing Castle for Tigers women and he was doing non-league football. Mm-hmm. There's many things he was showing, you know, he was thinking away from mainstream mm. and he was getting himself into other sports. And that's what caught my eye. Uh, really nice kid. Uh, and he still sends me stuff every week, just itching for stuff to get in. And it's still, yeah, it's still a shame that women's sports not classed as mainstream. But let's get back to Simon Bullock's question about the CV. There it is. How do you make a CV stand out from the rest if you only spend 10 seconds looking at it? Good question, Simon. I spend a bit more than that, but I know what you mean. Um, but show that broad range of work experience and examples of if you have done what Joe Urquhart done, you know, show that. I did this, I went and went. I went way above what you'd expect. Don't I mean, don't say I went way above what you'd expect. And put some testimonials in. If instead of a reference or well as well as a reference rather maybe get a testimonial from the a person in my position who has who knows that you're someone of like for instance if you were Flora Snelson if she were to ask me to get she wants a job she I'd said to her it's I'll write you I'll write you 100 words saying Flora every week without fail sent me uh, sent me questions uh, sent me this report in uh, never let us down. Very reliable, strong writer, uh, worth an interview. So if you do do something like that, get a testimonial from an employer. I think that goes a long way. Uh, yep. And show and show a broad range that you can do a lot of things. Don't pigeonhole yourself. Don't say, I'm into football, I'm into rugby league, that's all. Yeah. Or I want to write. Say, I will turn my hand to anything. That's what I want on mm. my spot. There's someone who I can throw some anything to and they can react and do it. So I'm hearing again about broad um, spectrum and being versatile. So let's have a quick, few quick fire questions now. We've got quite a few left to go. So uh, John Wilson asks, is it, imp- oh, well, there we are. Exactly that. You yes. More or less answered yes. that question, John, hasn't he? That sh- show your breadth of um, sport. Definitely. Like, even if you have to show examples of your knowledge. Mm. And then now a quick one from Harry, Harry Discombe on, on Facebook. Any tips for making the most of a, a placement work experience while you're there? Yeah. Well, you did three years worth yourself. Yeah, just speak. Uh, speak to the editor, speak to the desk, but, you know, let them know you'll do anything. Um, body language is important. I remember one one guy who came and I asked him, you interested in wrestling? I expected him not to say much. And he went, no, not interested at all. So I thought, all right, okay. Fair enough, because I had a little wrestling story I wanted him to write, but his reaction was so bad, I, I was done with this, this was Monday morning, I weren't interested in the rest of the week. Body language was awful. So if you're asked, if you're asked anything, do it. If you're, speak to the editor, don't like, you don't want to be in his face, in, in their face all the time, but you know, just keep them abreast of what you're doing. Uh, say, I'm working on this story. If, if, if that per, if the sports editor or the editor gives you a press release, don't just rewrite it and knock it straight back. So <laughs> look at the look at the notes for editors. Think, okay, I've got okay. Let me. What can I do? Shall I ring this? And you know, shall I ring this? Engage in a bit of conversation with either the desk, with either the sports editor, or or the members of the desk. And that's picked up. You don't have to be there all the time. That's picked up that you show sure willing. Uh, about twenty five percent of work experience on the thing we ask to come back or we get them doing local football or we get them doing a Flora Snelson role uh yeah. all the years of Bernie uh and we we give them because you know you know someone's good and we see a lot of work experience 
and they do quickly fade, unfortunately, because we see so many. But the good ones stand out. The good ones are those that show willing, good body language, they're on time. They're not in always saying, oh, I know I'm leaving at four. Hmm. Now, journalism is not an industry where you leave at four. Hmm. You don't, you know, if the, if the story's not written, you stay till it's written. So think outside the box. Come with a story idea as well. You don't have to be. So don't have to be excellent. Don't come with a story idea. I've seen Leeds beat Man United. I want to write a report on it. Don't don't come with that. Come with a story idea, like away from the mainstream. Ilkley Tennis Club need twenty thousand pounds for a new roof. I've got an interview with their tournament director. Brilliant. Let's have it. So perhaps now, rather more kindly, perhaps than last time, you can put a refinement on your um, blagging your way through it, the, of the of the to get John Wilson's broadest uh, depth, that you, breadth that you want. Is would you say then that you need to be outside your comfort zone? So say yes, I'll do that, which isn't quite yes, the same yeah, as that, as. That's the theme. That's the theme. You can always read up. I didn't know anything about exactly. cycling. I wasn't interested in cycling until <laughs> it was announced in January two thousand and thirteen that Tour de France was coming to. Yeah. Yorkshire. No one else was in the interested in cycling on our desk, so I made sure it was me who was it was doing it. And within six months, I was covering a few stages on the south of France. Uh, that summer's Tour de France, uh, and I was completely immersed in it. And I absolutely love yeah. the sport now. So Brilliant. you can always read. You can always yeah. read up quickly. So some of our students could spot the gap, see what's coming up, what yeah. isn't being filled, jump into that gap, and do the research, yeah. which is one of the things I teach them um, at, after they've said yes. Yeah, Leeds Rhinos netball, prime example of that. New sport coming to Yorkshire. I'm not going to be able to staff it, but mm -hmm. get it, get in there, get in there, get on straight, straight onto them. They've got a good network, but mm. get straight onto them. Brilliant. Right, we have four minutes left, and I'd just like to do a couple more questions. Ben Cropper, um, how hard is it to give due prominence to sports teams in decline? Um, you can read that yourself. Well, we Boy. should we say Leeds United now, but more recently York, Yorkshire. Could, Carnegie, I think that's meant to say. Leeds well, um, it's a funny one. Yorkshire Post does a, used to do a lot of rugby union, but that is really a, a sport on the wane in Yorkshire. Uh, Leeds Tykes is another one you can get involved with because they're, Phil Davis is their director of rugby. He's getting them upwardly mobile again. It might take them two or three years. But it's a good, good club to get uh, on the coattails of. They're reborn. Uh, Yorkshire Carnegie were a, a bit of a hot mess the last few years. Uh, and our coverage dropped off uh, once, particularly Yorkshire Evening Post, once they dropped the Leeds title. I know it's Yorkshire Evening Post, but it's the Leeds Daily. So mm -hmm. once they dropped the Yorkshire uh, Leeds title, we moved away from them a bit in the Yorkshire Evening Post. Uh, so it is difficult, but I like to have a, a, a real broad range of sport across both titles uh, in print and online. Uh, so... You work for the fan bases in those respects. Leeds United's massive. Uh, Leeds Tykes, Yorkshire County, you get about a thousand. So you, you, your coverage reflects that. Brilliant. Thank you. Just one more question then, please, before we go. It's been really helpful. Thank you. So um, back on YouTube, what, what's your best tip for someone looking to make it in the industry? This is a great one to finish up on. Your top uh, tip. My top tip is um, get on with a club uh, and do a full year whether it's your final year of university or it's your, your year doing a master's, get on with a club and supplement your work by doing at least two, two things a week for that club, whether that's covering a game and doing their social media, covering a press conference, writing a report uh, for us or other rival titles. Uh, I don't think there's anything better. That's what I look for most, people who have, done it for a year sustained and then get and then if you have done that get them to write a hundred word testimonial for your um cv nick westby thank you so much we really appreciate you your much. time it's been fantastic i hope some of those details will really have uh, hit the mark with the students and that you'll see in future the jobs that they get as a consequence of listening to you today thank you so oh, much thank you. i really enjoyed it thank you very much
Pleasure. And for everybody else, um, don't go away. Just go and put the kettle on now. Come straight back because at two o'clock we've got um, an interesting topic of representation in uh, news and the media circle. And then at three o'clock, something close to my heart, uh, broadcast journalism, how to get behind the mic. Um, so come along to those two as well. And thanks again, Nick, for your session today. We much appreciate it. Thank you it. very much. You're welcome. Enjoying it.